Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Invin and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a video on new world tips and tricks that you might not have already known and some of these are going to be quite hidden nifty little things that I've found throughout the game or just things that are fairly obvious once you know where they are but actually finding them can be a little bit tricky at the start. So what I'm going to go over is some of my best ones here. I've got about 10 tips and tricks for you guys that are really going to help you out all throughout new world for new players, for experienced players and obviously some will serve as a reminder. Some might be brand new knowledge. So let me know if you do find out anything brand new in the comments down below and without further ado let's jump into today's video so as we jump into today's video i just want to give you guys a reminder that i will be live streaming on twitch tonight we have a war upcoming on the day of uploading this video so if you want to get involved with that and come and see what's happening it should be a lot a lot of fun so make sure you head over there the link will be in the description and comments and we're going live every single day so if you guys want to join in with the streams join the link for that down below through that and i'd love to see you over there now, the first tip we've got here is to absolutely get every quest, every side quest, every main quest, every faction quest, and every town board quest when you are leveling in a certain area. So, for example, right now, I would get this one, uh, I'd get the turkeys, I'd get the common health potions, and you might think, okay, those are the ones that I can probably make pretty easy and kill 25 turkeys I'm going around fairly good. Now, you can also get the explorers needed ones if they're on there, this time I've got three on the town board in Cutlass Keys. And the reason these are good is because when you pair them up with the faction quests, the main quests, and the side quests, if you go in, in an area like, for example, Cutlass Keys, earlier I had about nine quests in this one area. So when I headed back up to town, I had one to hand in on the road, and then eight quests to hand in here, so I got about a level and a half in one run. Now, that was with PvP enabled, so I had the PvP quest as well, which probably made it slightly better. So I would recommend doing that if you are in a fairly amicable area. This area that I'm in right now, now there's quite a lot of my faction in and not too many enemies flagged up so I was able to do that pretty pretty smoothly and it worked out very very nicely. Now the next tip here is that the area or an objective for a task for a quest is actually a lot bigger than a lot of people think. So let's take Salty Marshes here in Cutlass Keys for an example. When you get the quest marker it'll be somewhere like round around here or just down below here somewhere and a lot of people will go directly to that quest marker as most players would. I indeed myself did so in the closed beta when I thought that that was still how it worked. But if you have a look on the map, you can faintly see, and unfortunately there's not a way to make it better right now for you guys unless I turn on colorblind assist. But if I zoom in a lot, you guys can see there's a sort of dotted, dashed outline just around the edge here. And then a slightly brighter yellow colour instead of the yellow that's surrounding it. Now obviously you can see this better when it goes over the paths and things like that. And this is actually the entire area of Salty Marshes. So when I go back out, you can see that it says Salty Marshes right here. But this entire yellow area right here will all be active for any quests that tell me to go to Salty Marshes. Meaning that it's not just the chests that are in these three buildings. There might be all of these seven or eight buildings down here, plus all of these ten up here. Meaning that you can do the quest there fairly easily and this goes for any zone on the game so let's scroll over to Windswood for example and let's have a look here when it tells you to go for okay let's say Greenville Farm that one gives you it's kind of a white yellowy box there with a dashed outline and if you zoom right in again it will show you that outline so you can see all of the buildings and all of the area within that area will count towards kills chests etc whatever you need to get for the current quest that you are doing now number three here is letting your stamina go down to zero has basically no benefits in the game and now this might seem fair obvious for any newer players that have experienced the slow running and very slow region once you do actually get down to zero but for anybody that played the previews or the first beta this has actually changed it used to be that once you got it down to zero it would then regen quicker so there was kind of a benefit from triple rolling if you like you roll let it regen a bit roll and then roll again instantly you'd get a big distance on people and you get that first regen from the stamina this is no longer the case so any old school players for this game get rid of that out of your minds it's now a very bad idea to be doing you want to make sure that you're keeping at least one stamina at all times for those of you that are newer to the game that have been doing this anyway essentially what i like to do is dodge roll forward or dodge jump forward depending on your weight class wait a little bit for stamina do it again and then wait a little bit more do it again and every time you get five six over over the threshold you can then do another dodge and that will help you move a lot faster and in combat this works really really well as well because it allows you to just maneuver around your enemy close a bit of space and as well don't overuse your stamina walk towards people or run towards people a lot of the time they'll end up dodging you can probably then use your catch-up ability or even just carry on running towards them as their animation locked catch them up pretty quickly and then you've got stamina which they don't have which will give you a good advantage in most fights now number four here is something that quite a lot of people didn't realize off the bat is that melee combat actually has some soft tracking essentially what that means is when you swing your 
weapon, axe, sword, whatever it is, melee weapon at an enemy, it will track that enemy. If they move a little bit, it'll kind of do go towards them and kind of track round somewhat. Now, this isn't major. This isn't like it'll flip round 360 and get you those kills, but it is a very good feature. But one thing to bear in mind is when this does happen, if you do an ability in a direction, it might then flick you to the side to think that the enemy's going there. And if they dodge backwards, that is how you can either use your dodging to avoid it. Or when you are using melee combat, you want to make sure that you actually recorrect it if it does go slightly off because you can drag it back with your mouse to a roughly place where you want it to be and that will actually work out as well so just be aware that that is the case this is why terrain in pvp makes a huge difference so if you're higher up with a hatchet you're going to be able to hit less shots than you would be if you were actually on lower ground which sounds weird but it's just how the way that the shots connect with the melee tracking whereas the great axe you have a big lunge on which is why a lot of people think it's op but it's actually just the design of the game and how the mechanics work which is why i really really enjoy the great axe for that extra reach and those extra ability to hit those axe hit a little bit better. Now this is something that a lot of people have not yet taken advantage of and some people know it, some people just do the fort because it's part of PvP, but if you are actually PvP questing, as you guys can see, when you go onto the fort here and hover over it, it will tell you who it's claimed by and who currently controls it. And underneath this there is something called territory bonuses. Now this means that you get plus 20% influence in a territory and plus 5% experience. Now the faction bonus, which is just goes to whoever owns the settlement in that area, is lower fast travel base cost by 50% but that goes to whoever owns the settlement so if you want that you will actually have to take the entire settlement not just the fort. Now the fort can be claimed anytime that's not an invasion or war lockout period. So for example if you go to Monarch's Bluff and you see that this one right here is currently open and available to capture even though there's a war going on but once that war period starts you will be locked out of capping it during this stage obviously because it's used in the war instance and such that so gives it a bit more of immersion to the game which is a very very cool feature. Now what this means is if you've actually got the territory bonus active from capturing a fort. Let's say I wanted to capture Cutlass Keys. I'm currently playing Covenant. And this is a syndicate owned area. Influence points increase by 20% when you have it, which means that if you're running the PvP faction quest with a, even just a small group, maybe three, four players, you're going to be getting a ton more influence towards your own faction's progress towards throwing the territory into conflict when you have a fort captured so always 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 when you're pvp questing in an area try to capture a fort but do not be surprised if you get contested because obviously the enemies will be aware of this most likely or they will be after watching this video and that will mean that they're going to defend that so you can't cap it quite as quickly so you can still do it without it just makes a huge benefit to do it and if you're running past there's nobody online you're playing at an obscure time or it's just very quiet in the area you're in you may as well try and cap it because it will give you a plus 5% increase to experience points in that area. So if you're just running around doing some questing, you've got PvP active, try and get it, you might as well. Now, another thing that not a lot of people know or people tend to forget about on the map is that you can actually check the tier of the stations and the taxes from clicking on the settlement. So let's take Everfall in my world for an example. You can click on this here and you can see they've got an upcoming war. They also have crafting, refining and taxes all in the bracket just under here. Now, if there isn't an upcoming war, obviously, if we click on somewhere, let's go back to Cutlass Keys, trusty old Cutlass Keys, it just tells you straight under who controls it currently and which faction they are, and then all of the stuff is right there. Now, as you guys can see, it tells you each tier of station. So if you're looking for, let's say you're looking for a tier four forge, you wouldn't go here, but maybe you look at Windsward and go, okay, they've got a tier two as well. Monarch's Bluff, they've got a tier three, so that's the best one so far. What about Cutlass Keys? Oh, they've got a tier two, and you can kind of go around the map and see which place has what you need, if any, obviously with it being early doors, some might start, you know, not getting there quite as quickly yet, but I'm sure that most things will be on their way to be getting upgraded. Now, another huge, huge thing is the taxes. Now, as you guys can see, these guys have got extreme on crafting and refining. It was extreme across the board last time I made a video for any of you that saw that. The tech trading tax was also on extreme. They've lowered that to moderate now, which is decent, and we've also got property tax at medium or moderate for now. But I don't trust these guys. They're kind of sneaky. They play well, but that's just their way of playing. If you look at somewhere like Windsward, they've got it all on very, very low, except from average on trading tax, which makes sense because that's where the money maker is for most settlements. And so you can go across and just see, say, for example, you wanted to craft, you'd probably go here to Windsward and craft. And currently you might go to there to trade, but you might also go over to Monarch's Bluff to trade because that one's slightly cheaper. So then you can kind of pick and choose where you want to trade things, where you want to craft things, etc., based on what they have and the cost of doing so in a certain settlement. And also as kind of like a bonus tip linked onto this if you go to a settlement and zoom in on the map so say for example we're at cutlass keys if we zoom all the way in you can actually see what is inside the settlement and if you hover over it, it'll tell you that's where the smelter is that's where the workshop is obviously that's your player one 
and you've got Trading Post, Covenant Adjudicator, blah, 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 and you can see where everything is, including the inn, on the map, so that if you do want to go ahead and find a specific thing in a settlement you've not been to before, you can just go ahead and do that. These chest ones here are also your storage sheds, so you can find out where they are too. Now, if you are getting full on repair parts, I've got quite a few. If you press tab, you can see this just at the bottom of your inventory. Currently, I'm on around half there, as you guys can see, but one thing you can actually do if you want to save a few of these is actually when you start to get towards the cap, you can make these into standard repair kits or whatever level you have unlocked. Now, usually, these are pretty bad. They give basically no experience in the required skill. Um, it fully repairs any tier 2 standard item, so obviously you'd need to level this up for the higher tier items, right? But it costs a crafting mod and it does craft repair parts, so it's not the most kind of easy thing to do or most beneficial thing to do but if you have got a ton of spare crafting mods this is not my main area so I barely have any here and you also are capping out at repair parts then it's certainly worth doing because you're not going to be scrapping things down and letting the repair parts go to waste so it's certainly something I would look at if you are getting towards that cap. Now another thing on the map interface that a lot of players have missed out on is actually this thing on the left here which says resource locations. If you click on this one, it will tell you where each of the resources in the game can be found or at least an example of that. So in passable areas are things like the rocks here, which as we all know we can kind of climb over but is what it is, it tells you it's kind of impassable there. You've also then got things like forest which will tell you trees, hemp, herbs. So that will mean that those lower tier ones but also the higher tier ones, it just gives you that as an example. You've then got things like the grassland, high marsh etc and it will tell you roughly where you can find each resource based upon this now obviously i know a lot of people will use an external map such as new world fans or whatever but this is a quick reminder in game if you're looking around you haven't got the map up maybe you're streaming or maybe you're just playing and you can't be bothered to tab out if you especially if you're on that one monitor this is really really going to help you out to be able to go okay grassland forest i need hemp yep they're going to be able to go north here and basically find it and that's really kind of a good way of finding a key in the game now following on from this this is a really handy little tip you will actually see on the map, especially when you scroll out, you've got all these big bars telling you kind of like the experience. And if maybe you want to, let's say you want to zoom in and see, you've got upcoming invasion, you want to see who owns this town, kind of everything's in the way, you know, there's all kind of stuff there. What you can do is go into the filters at the side, you can toggle your player off. I personally obviously like that one on. Your respawn locations, so obviously if you've got a campfire, where that will be on the map. Landmarks, so you can see if you zoom in, you've got like Buccaneers Fall, for example, he's currently there. If I do that, they all disappear. So it's up to you again if you want to take that off or on. Personally, I like it on. Outposts, again, you can toggle those on and off, and Faction Influence. Now, Faction Influence is going to be the biggest one, because as you guys can see, if, you do, if you're getting kind of annoyed about the upcoming wars, upcoming invasions, all being on the screen, go on there, click Faction Influence, and that disappears. It also gets rid of the bars, obviously, that tell you how close you are to capping it when you do kind of look on those ones as well. So, for example, Requater, the one we own currently, if we go on that and toggle it, it won't tell us. But it does get rid of all of these wars and invasion notices. So, if you're finding them annoying, filter them off on the side of your map. And finally here, one last thing to go over for today's video is going to actually be that the higher level zones give higher level faction influence and faction tokens. Now, what I mean by that is, if you do it in a higher level zone, you're going to get more tokens and more influence for completing it. For example, if you have a look here, I've got faction missions, which will give me 505 faction rep and 625 tokens on the old PvE missions there, and the PvP ones give, obviously, significantly more. Now, if you go to a lower level zone like Windswood or Everfall or any of the starting zones, they're only going to be about two to 300 points and tokens per one. So obviously, always try and do the highest level faction zone you can. Do the quest from there. Take a couple of friends if you need to, but you will be able to gather these influence points and these tokens a lot, lot faster. And this is something to really, really consider if you are trying to get that new tier. So for example, I've just unlocked Exubiter. So I'm trying to get that level 40 gear just ahead of reaching level 40 in game. And that's going to be something that I can grind out a lot easier if I do it in the Cutlass Keys, Weaver's Fen, or indeed Brightwood, which are my highest level zones currently. So hopefully you guys have found this video useful and informative. Hopefully you've learned something new or you've been reminded of something that maybe you forgot about in New World because it's been a while since we all played it and getting back into it. These are a few of the things I've come across that I thought, oh yeah, that's actually really handy. So I thought I'd bring you guys a video kind of summarizing a few of those. These are kind of like my best tips at the moment. So hopefully you do find it useful. If you have, please do be sure to leave a like on today's videos. That really, really does help me out. If you are new to the channel here and you'd like to see 
posting more New World content. I'm going to be posting content every single day, so make sure you hit the subscribe button down below with the notification bell on so you don't miss out on that. We're getting ever, ever closer to 10,000 subs, and that is my current goal. So if you can help me reach that, that would be much, much appreciated. Like I said at the beginning of today's video, I will be live streaming on Twitch later on this evening after the video goes up. If you're watching it on the day or at the time of it dropping. If not, I'm going to be going live on Twitch every single day, so make sure you do drop a follow on there if you want to be part of the live streams. It would be awesome to see a lot of you guys over there. If you'd like to join the Discord community, we have tons of tons of players, over a thousand people in chatting all things New World, you know, kind of crafting, theory crafting, builds, PvP, PvE, everything. So if you want to get involved in that, the link for that will be in the description and comments as well. And of course, if you want to support me directly here on YouTube as a content creator, the join option for the memberships is down below as well, and that's much appreciated. If you want to click on that and have a look through the options there, then by all means do that. Other than that, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care and peace.